And welcome back to the Steve Malzberg Show, ladies and gentlemen. Yesterday, the news broke that if you are a Target shopper, and I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just don't understand how there are 40 million. This is not to, 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 to belittle Target or Target shoppers, but one-sixth of the people in this country shop at Target. I don't think I've ever walked into a Target store in my life. Uh, anyway, um, if you are a Target customer and I used a credit card between November 27th and December 15th, um, you may have a problem. Your identity might have been stolen. Uh, joining us now to talk about uh, how, why, what to do, the whole thing, is uh, Stuart McClure, cybersecurity expert, the CEO of Silence Inc. Hello, Stuart. Hi, Steve. How are you? Good. Merry Christmas to you. Same to you, yeah. All right. Well, uh, not a Merry Christmas uh, for the 40 million who now might be in a bit of a panic when some, first of all, when something like this happens and you're alerted as the, as the public has been uh, en masse alerted through the media, what, what do you do if you shop to Target during those times? Well, you know, you've probably already been outreached, too, by one of the providers. Even uh, I've been told that even American Express, for example, has been reaching out individually if their cards have been a part of this breach. Target is reaching out directly as well. You'll usually either get a call, like from American Express, so you get letters, uh, emails, and, um, you know, you take uh, the, the, the guidance that they usually give. So first guidance is usually... Um, to somehow describe the, the scope of it, although they usually never give a lot of the details there um, in terms of how the perpetrators did it, although I do have some good speculation on that. And then um, second is uh, to follow the procedures around fraud detection and prevention going forward. So they usually, well, they're forced, um, certainly in California and many other states, to actually pay for um, credit monitoring systems and bureaus to watch your credit and uh, detect on any fraudulent um, charges that come from that. So all 40 million credit cards effectively have to be washed, and they have to uh, die out, and, and 40 million new credit cards have to be issued, the numbers and car physical cards, obviously. So it's a huge expense for the company uh, that was the victim of the breach, but then, of course, it's just a huge inconvenience. And you, you want to, as a consumer, just make sure that you stay on top of any emails that come through that look to be fraudulent, uh, look to be uh, coming from a company that would indicate that you, your credit card has been stolen. In fact, a buddy of mine, I usually get these. All of my friends, of course, knowing I'm in the biz, will instantly email me all these emails. So I know what they're they're trying to do and look for. But uh, one of them said that, yeah, they went to Priceline and bought a few things, which is odd because Priceline is a services, uh, you know, type of uh, capability. You can, you know, rent hotels and cars and airlines. But uh, usually they go after merchandise, and, and certainly he had that as well on his credit card. But right. credit card companies usually cover it just fine, um, right up as fraud. You just, you just have to respond. You just have to write. And, right. you got to be careful. and be. Now, let me ask you this. I've heard uh, a report today that uh, the suspected area of, from where this uh, was perpetrated uh, might have been in the area of, uh, of Vietnam. Well, you know, the, the, I'll be honest. So the emerging markets and the Asia PAC in particular is a now a hotbed. It's, it all goes in cycles, right? It goes from, you know, Russia to China to and Malaysia. And now Indonesia and Vietnam tend to be one of the two of the hot, hottest hotbeds out there for hacking. And it's real simple because there are no laws. There's no law enforcement of any sort, certainly in the cyber world, you know, very little in the physical for that matter. And you have the ability to get away with a lot. No one monitors any connections out there. No pipes, network pipes are, are, are looking at. So you're at saying if they, if, they hack in, if they hacked into Target system from there, it's not against the law there? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very possibly not against the law. It depends on how the attack occurred, uh, what, what systems they used to perform the attack, um, what type of tools they used to perform. I understand that it was actually more of a malware type attack on the point of sale systems, although that's unconfirmed, but that's the, the scuttlebutt right now. And if that's the case, um, it's most likely not going to be within the realm of law enforcement's jurisdiction down there. Wow. Now, Interpol might jump in and try and enforce some local enforcement. But honestly, there's just very little attention to that stuff in, in emerging markets like let, that. Let me ask you one more, Stuart. Uh, we have about a minute and a half left. Uh, there was a story the other day that uh, something that, to look out for in 2014 is that uh, these uh, you'll get these notices saying basically your whole web, your whole computer is being held ransom, and you got to pay yeah. in these bits. And if you yep. don't pay the ransom, they give you a countdown clock, and they just destroy everything on your computer. Is this is this something that's going to become commonplace? 
Yeah, it's been growing over the years pretty rampantly, and next this coming year, I, I do predict it to be a, a big, big mess. We've been engaged with a lot of customers that have done this. It's had this happen to them, and we've gone in and, and actually hacked the hacker, uh, going back and reversing their encryption. Now, we can't do that in every case, and in this particular case with CryptoLocker, it's one of the most popular ones. It is very, very difficult to defeat, so you ultimately you either have to restore the data from a backup or you have to pay. Now, we have discovered that over $30 million have been collected through this Bitcoin system that you're referring to by the bad guys extracting it from these victims, over $30 million. I mean, why wouldn't you go do it as a bad guy? It's a no-brainer. So and people are going to get healthy. notices with a clock on their computer that appears out of nowhere, and it's going to be legit. And if they don't pay this ransom, their, 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 whole, uh, their whole hard drive is wiped out, basically. That, that's generally true, unless you engage with you know, someone like us that can help you along the path. But All right. Yeah, well, Silence uh, Inc., uh, the, we're talking to the CEO, security expert, cybersecurity expert, Stuart McClure. Thank you, Stuart, and Merry Christmas on that uh, bright note. Thank you very much. We'll have Thanks, you back Steve. to talk Thanks, about Steve. it. All right, folks, okay. um, we're coming back with hour number two of the Steve Malzberg Show, and we'll kick it off with more on the Duck Dynasty controversy here on Newsmax TV and radio. The Steve